So I need a cat, and he needs to be called Mr. Bacon. Now, in order to get a cat, I need to have fishes. And in order to have fishes, I need a fishes rod. Now, I don't have a fishing rod, so I'm going to have to make one. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard. I don't know, it won't be too hard. I have all the stuff I need. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So I've got a fishing rod, and I'm just going to use this to fish. So yeah, congratulations, you found the fishing episode. Considering it's a fishing episode, I might as well try and chat about something. Um, For those of you who do not know, this is sort of a secondary thing for me. This is just sort of a way for me to enjoy my hobby uh, in a way that can entertain other people and, you know, hopefully glorify the Lord. But, oh, here we go. Nice. I have um another channel, it's the main channel, so you know how this is Geoglitch Gaming, that's Geoglitch Ministries, that's the main thing. And on there I am dedicated to going verse by verse through the Bible. Now I've only been doing it for a few months, so I'm still in Genesis chapter 1. In fact, I've only just finished with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, I, I did 7 parts on it. But if you're interested in going verse by verse through the Bible, I'd uh, check that out. My plan is to hopefully do verse by verse through the entire Bible. Whether or not I'll get that done, because that'll take like years and years. So whether or not I'll get that done, I don't know. Um, but that is the hope and the dream. Oh, puffer fish. Apparently if you eat this, you get poisoned. Also, you can get some mad stuff from fishing. You can get like boots and stuff, which is just crazy. Oh yeah, and I got some chain there boots, which is cool. I might put that, them on later. I'll try to get ten. Ten should be enough. But yeah, if you're interested in just listening to stuff, each each video is about a half hour long. It's like a proper proper sermon, but like not in a church. It's just just me and my study of the Bible. I do try and go in uh, as deaf as in depth as possible. I don't know if I can feed the cats this. So I, I won't try it because they are poisonous. But I you know, I try and go as in I try and go in as in depth as I possibly can. Um, so yeah, if that's something that it seems like it would interest you, by all means check it out. Because for those of you who don't know, you might have been watching the series and seen the odd allusion to uh, Christianity and thought, why does this guy keep, oh, keep very rarely bringing up his faith? Um, this is meant to be a faith-based channel. This is meant to be a channel based in the Christian faith. I'm a, a Reformed Baptist, and this is just sort of a way, like I say, of hopefully entertaining people in a way that brings honour and glory to God. That's why one of the main objections of um, objectives of this series is going to be to build a church. Keep getting puffer fish now. I, I got a good streak going with the raw fish, but now I just keep getting these. Also, the, the um, cat is going to need a house, so I'm going to work on that. Hopefully, get, at least get started on that in this video. I have no idea what the house is going to be like yet. I want to get the cat first, see what kind of cat it is, and then kind of base the house around it. There we go. Yeah, I've got um, on my iPad, I've got here in front of me pictures of just a Google like cat house. And I, I just uh, got the pictures up and I'm going to get the ink sacks off of this guy while I'm here. There we go. Because I might need black wool. I don't know how many um, fish it'll need. Like, I think with dogs, it, I heard that it can be anywhere between 1 and 10 bones. But that might be in, like, hardcore mode. Because the most it's ever taken me is, like, I'd say 4 or 5. And that's only very rarely. Usually it'll be uh, between, like, 1 and 3. But yeah, with fish or with uh, cats, it takes a lot more. With us, lots, it takes a lot more. I think, will it do? Look, I'll give it a go. I need to find one now is the only thing. So I don't know if I mentioned this. The cat's name is going to be Mr. Bacon. Uh, you guys don't get to uh, to choose a name. A friend of mine already has an Ooh, that looks cool. I have to exploit that at some stage. Problem now is going to be actually finding the cat. I say cat. It's an ocelot. Uh, an ocelot, but... Who cares about pronunciation? Also, if you guys um, were interested in what I was uh, saying before about the verse by verse teaching, I also publish all of those as their own little individual booklets. Now, I, I do tidy up the grammar in them a little bit, but there'll probably still be some grammar off in them. Um, but as for all the ones I've done so far, um, I, I just finished Genesis 1-1. And I did seven parts on that, like I said, so I compiled that into one booklet, and I think the grammar on that should be pretty much perfect. Um, so if you don't want to read gra bad grammar, because they're only the little booklets, um, I, I do you know try, but I, I don't spend that much time on them. It's just for the people who might want to read read along or 
for whatever reason i also just like link the the uh, the word document to all of them in the, the description of the videos oh i've got an egg Wee. um but yeah so look if you're interested more in reading and you'd like to read that you can go onto the the gwitch website um should be linked somewhere in either my bio here or um, my, my bio my like information here or my information on the 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 main channel you can go to the website and you'll be able to, to find it i'm also working on uh kind of three books at the moment so the first one i'm working on one i've been working on for a few months is a book about the five points of tulip um the second one is another one i've started on so the, the first one is just a, like a general regular theology book about the five points of tulip the second one's going to be a bit different though the second one is is also going to be about tulip it's going to be basically going through the entire bible and arguing like seeing all the verses that are for and against tulip um and seeing which one has the most scriptural support so so far i'm only a bit into genesis um but the way i have is like i have a bible open on my desk i have two copies and i have four pens of different colors and a pencil the reason for the pencil is i couldn't find a fifth pen of a different color so i've got them there and it's all color coded and all that and every time i i'm just reading through the, the bible cover to cover and anytime i find a verse that's like oh that could be used for um you know um total depravity or that can be used uh, against perseverance of the saints i will take a note of it i'll jot down a little note um and then by the end of it i'll go through i'll compile them all i'll see you know which one has the most support and that sort of a thing and i'll um because uh, i'm reformed I, I probably will be you know i'll be using the um i'll be proof I'll be, I'll be trying to prove it using the uh proof text that are for it and i'll be trying to disprove the you know proof text that are against it so so far i think like i said i think i'm like halfway through genesis so well, there's a horse a few horses but i think i'm like halfway through genesis maybe a bit maybe a bit less a bit more i'm not sure um i've got like two pages worth of stuff for reform theology and a few lines uh, against so that's just kind of showing you how it's gone so far so the, and look if during my study i find out that it's wrong obviously i'm going to correct my views accordingly because something i've seen recently is someone said oh i'm um x position and i'm not going to change and i think that's just like like that's just such a, a terrible way to be as a christian it's like i'm this denomination and i'm not going to change okay so if you find out that the bible teaches uh, something that you didn't think it taught you're going to ignore that you know like here's the thing i'm reformed baptist i am more than willing to change my views on theology provided you can prove that my views are not biblical the second i find out one of my views isn't biblical and there's another view that is biblical i will change my views accordingly i'm not stuck in this i oh melons i'm not stuck in this i just want to be faithful to the lord um, so I, you know, I never say I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm reformed Baptist and I am never, ever going to change that. Um, I don't think I'll change it. I don't, you know, I've studied the scriptures a fair bit. I, I think I've, I, I think I, I, I've got, you know, a fair and a decent idea of it, but I'll never presume that I've definitely got it all right. I know there's errors in my theology somewhere. Um, and maybe it comes in the, you know, the form of being re reformed Baptist maybe i'll become presbyterian i've been looking a bit more into infant baptism lately maybe i'll become presbyterian maybe i will become armenian again you know you, you never know I, i'm not stuck to anything i don't ever want to be stuck to any theological position all i want to be known as is faithful to the lord all i want to be known as is biblical My, i have no loyalty to reformed theology i have no loyalty to um baptist theology i have loyalty to god i have loyalty to the bible i have loyalty to the scriptures and to christ and to his word that's all i'm loyal to and it's from my reading and studying and understanding of those scriptures that i've come to the position that i have uh, but i'm more than more than willing to change and so if during the course of studying for this book i come to find that i was wrong about being you know reformed or i was wrong about being a baptist or i was wrong about this or wrong with that i will of course um change accordingly the bias is always going to be a thing bias is always going to be an unfortunate part of it um but i'm going to try and be as 
you know, faithful as I can. And if it turns out I'm wrong, I'm loyal to God, not Calvin. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll change accordingly. I, I can't see that happening, at least so far from all the study I've done just outside of this attempt at a book and just all the study I've only, I've, like I say, only about halfway through Genesis, all the stuff I've already got, um, every proof text against Reformed theology I've been able to explain away. Um, whereas I, I'd say some of the ones I have for Reformed theology might be a bit weak and you wouldn't really use them, but there have been some really, really uh, good ones. The, you know, the, like the, 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 the proof texts I have for Reformed theology are a mixture of good and not so good. Whereas all I've got from, and, and because of that, you know, I've got a fair few, but the few I've got from Arminian, for, or let's say Arminianism, for non Reformed theology, none of them have really been any good. You know, we're only halfway through Genesis. We'll see. I may well uh, find something that disproves me completely. And it seems that we have four birds here looking up to a, a pig. That's interesting, and I've never been this far before. Sorry, I'm rambling a lot. I have to ramble because otherwise there'll be nothing to do and this video will be seven minutes long. Like, I think the last one was seven minutes long because it was just two time lapses with me talking for, like, two minutes in the middle. So, yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry that you waited so long for an episode and then when one finally came, it was that. Um, I think the episode's actually doing all right. But yeah, so I, I know that's probably not what you wanted. And I don't know why I haven't found a cat yet. This is really bugging me. This is almost one. Do you know what? Like sometimes you find structures like this or things like this in Minecraft where it's like uh, almost completely circular. And it's odd. But yeah, so that's those are two of the three books I'm working on. I hope to have the first one out soon enough. Um, and then the second one will probably be uh, a good few months away. Because I'm trying to chip away at it every now and again, bit by bit. But so far, I've, I haven't even started typing it up yet. I've only just got the notes from my studies so far. Uh, so, you know, that, that that's going to be a long time in the working. But I think it will be worth it. And I've already got the taste for it. So I, I've already decided I'd like to do it for other things. I'd like to do it for the solas of Christianity. I'd like to do it for, um, you know, pretty much any doctrine, really. Maybe learn about God. Um, God through the old or Jesus through the Old Testament could be a cool study, um, all that sort of a thing, you know. Um, but yeah, just just going verse by verse through the Bible. That's that's what I love. And then the third book, I think, is a reflection of that, because the third book is based entirely on a single verse. It's based on Philippians four eight, uh, and the way I came to want to write about that was I was scrolling through TikTok, and one of the pages I follow on TikTok is one that does like these daily Bible verses. And the, the Bible verse was uh, Philippians 4, 8. And I'll put it up on screen now. And I don't know, just something about it hit me. And I'm just like, I, I, have, to, I have to do something with this. I don't know why. Uh, like I've read it before. I know because I, like, I read the entire Bible cover to cover when I got converted. It took me over a year, but I did it. Um, so I've, I've read it before, I've read Philippians a few times, I'm sure, I've read a lot of the, I've, I've probably read every book in the New Testament at least two or three times. The only reason it's not more is just because, you know, there's 27 of them, and there might be some that I've missed out on. Um, but yeah, so but for some reason I, I saw that verse in Philippians and there was just something inside of me that's like, you've got, you've got to do something with this, you, you can't leave this. And so I started working on it. And uh, the way I work is that, no, that's a bird. The way I work on it, is, or I started working on it was every day um, in the morning because I was also doing my studies through Genesis and still am. What I do is I would read through the first chapter of Genesis. Then I read five Psalms and a proverb. That's just a different thing I'm doing. I got that from Billy Graham. I'd read through five Psalms and a proverb. And then I'd go and I'd, I'd read through the entire book of Philippians. It's only four chapters, so about 20 minutes. And... Um, Actually, I went on a, a trip not too long ago, uh, only a few days ago, and on the way up it was an hour and 20 minutes, and I just had my earphones in, and I just played uh, the, you know, the U version app on, on my phone. I just listened to the ESV of Philippians a, a bunch of times, and I think I did a little bit of the King James, but we got there before I could finish that one. Right, I found one, I found one, I found one. Uh, he's over there, i just seen him through the bushes. 
Uh, I don't think I can like force feed them the fish. Oh, I should have brought more. After all this, after all this, it's not going to be enough, is it? Man, Mr. Lot, first name also. Man, please. Please. Oh, have I got too close to him? Come here, come here. Can I, can I feed him when he's like spooked? I don't know, I can't like get to him. Come here. I don't think I I think I have to wait till he's not spooked. Um okay, I'll wait for him to come to me. So he, he, he should he should like just decide, oh fish, lovely. And like decide he wants some. I think. Yes, he's approaching, he's approaching, he's approaching. I can't give it to him because of the, the grass. I gave him one there now. How do I give him more? I'm, uh, it's bloody long grass. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay. We'll see now if he decides he wants some of my fishers. Wait, let's go, I got one. Okay. Hello, Mr. Bacon, how are you? You're my best friend now. And uh, you probably can't see it, but I just got a, a lion tamer, tame an ocelot. Okay, let's go back to the base. Halfway through the episode, more than halfway, probably. Well, maybe, I don't know. But we're halfway through the episode, and I've finally gotten the ocelot. Good and stuff. Okay, but yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, and look, pe people give the King James a hard time. I know I've seen something about the King James. I think people give the King James a hard time. I don't think that's really fair. A lot of the King James problems just come from the fact that it was an accurate translation into, well, I say like a mostly accurate translation with, you know, problems, but a mostly accurate translation into a 400 year old version of English. And what most people don't know, I think the version we have now of the uh, King James isn't the original King James because the original King James would have been pretty much illegible to us. I think the one we have now comes from a, a few decades later, but the, the original King James um, was basically a type of English that was just really old that you would not have been able to understand. Um, you, you might as well be reading, you pretty much would be reading it in a different language from my understanding. It could be wrong, but that's like my understanding of it. Um, but yeah, so, so the, the one we have now is like the, is it, is it the 1611 one or is it? No, it, it's like no, the 1611 is the original, I want to say, and the one we have now is like early 70s, I have no idea. Um, but the, the one we have now is not the original King James, so the King James only is really aren't even using the proper King James, they're using a new and revised version of the King James, but the King James is good, I like it. Um, I can't understand it at the time, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. Um, but my, my personal favourite would be the ESV, the English Standard Version. Uh, I think it's a good blend of understandable and faithful so it's you know it's like are not understandable understandable but also like um accurate so it's not like the niv where you could you know read through a text and get the general understanding but you could never do a word for word we uh, study of it whereas with the esv you can read through a text and get the uh, the understanding of it um, or you could do a word for word or a word by word study. So I didn't think of it. We I forgot. Mm, that's a bunch of words, not in proper sentences. I need to get this guy a, a house. So I do. I never thought about where I was going to build it or what I'm even going to build it out of. So let's see. So I'm going to make it uh, white and black. I think. See, like I said, I have pictures of um, cash houses here. I want to see one that like looks cool. Uh, I might just like nick the uh, the idea for it. That that can be white and black. Or should I just? Hmm. I might just do like um, out like like the same sort of general design, but like out of wool. I think maybe. Um. Yeah, sure. And then I need to get started on the secret um stuff. Hello, I I can't remember. Po um, Pope Pius the tent. So I need to get started on the secret passageways and stuff. So where should I build the cat's house? Because there's not really much space over here. Do I have any dirt on me? Not much. Um 
Hmm. I could have it down a level, I suppose. But it would be nice to have it all in one level. I'll, I'll just go and get some dirt and I'll just um, make it all a bit more level. And then I will go get some wool and we'll, we'll get started on the basic outline. And I've got dirt in here, I'm sure. We'll get started on the basic outline. Look, we're not going to get far in this video. Uh, I could make this an extra long video. We wouldn't get very far. I've already spent so long just wandering around and chatting and not doing much. So, I don't know. We'll see. So, either... I'll do the time lapse, so I will have a time lapse again in this video. Either the time lapse will be or at least I probably will anyway. The time lapse will either be um, another part of the farm, more than likely, because that's sort of the tradition now, or it could be me building this. I might just do the farm and then just have me building this like in the next episode. But I do want to get started because I do want to actually have something done today. Rather than just me wandering around the, the forest chatting. Because I um like, I stopped recording for, I'd say, three or four minutes there uh, while I was looking for the ocelot. So, this, this video could have been, well, I won't say it could have been longer, but it could have been a lot more empty. I could have just found the ocelot and then had, like, two minutes left to record a video. Um, yeah, so I, I, didn't, I didn't think it would take that long. I thought I'd, I'd get one maybe the first 10, 20 minutes, but it took me, I suppose, it's just outside of 20 minutes, really. But if I'd have kept recording... Um, you know, I would not have had much time to do anything else. So it's a good thing I thought of something to think about, so that this video wasn't just like five minutes long of me just looking for an ocelot, and then finding one, and then, you know, building two blocks of a house, and then that'll be the end of it. Because that'll be what it would be, because like I said, I record these in, you know, the, in the four minutes, uh, or not the four minutes, the uh, four part sections. So, you know. This could very easily if if I've been a five minute video if I if I wasted another section on looking for the ocelot and not finding it. And I think I'm gonna bring my bed over to where I'm building. What I really need is a sheep farm for the wool. So I think I might work on that in the next episode. I think I'll get started on this. But I won't do much on it. I won't finish it. I'll just do a little bit. And then in the next episode We'll do a sheep farm because I have a very cool idea. You'll probably be able to guess what it is. It's going to be, uh, once I have it done, it's going to seem pretty obvious that, of course, he's going to do it like that. But I won't spoil the surprise. So if you can't guess, you don't want to guess, just wait till the next video and you'll see. Uh, so I'll get started on the sheep farm in the next video. Um, and then I can just, you know, I can get the wool that I need and I can work on this a bit more. I'll get rid of this grass for now so it's not in the way. And look, when I'm done with the um, with with the builds in this area, I can just come back with bone meal and just put more grass around, so it's not that big a deal. It's hard to think we're already in episode ten. I know ten isn't that big of a milestone, but it's still something in it. I wonder how things would have gone as well if um, the bedrock version of the game hadn't messed up and if I'd stayed playing on it. Would I have ever had the dirt house? Would I have ever had this farm? I mean, maybe. Um, I probably wouldn't have had the dirt house because the dirt house was meant to be done in memory of dirt because Norman thought dirt was dead for some reason. Um, and if, if you've not caught up on the lore, if you've only seen like just the most recent episodes, that's going to be a very confusing couple of sentences. But anyway, so the dirt house was, um, you know, because Norman thought that dirt was dead. So he did it like in me he wanted it in memory. Um, and the water thing there is only because I said it couldn't be built out of dirt. So both of these came from thinking dirt was dead because of the switch. So I may, I may never have had the the dirt mansion. I may never have had the uh, the water farm, which is just sort of mad to think about, really. Because they're just sort of staples of the world. I say staples. Should I do great? No, I have black wool. Okay, but um, you know, they're they're obviously they're notable parts of the world now. What did I do with the uh, the ink sacks? I think I threw them into a chest. You know, it isn't that. It's just strange to wonder how would it have gone, because looking where I was, I was in like a snow place. I was, you know, there was um. That type of wood, and I know when I'm editing this, I would not want to do the zoom effect, so I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what type of wood it is. Uh, see if I have any more ink sacks. Um. But yeah, it's just it's it's just strange to think how could things have gone. I don't know, I'm gonna go back in these in this chest over here, check, see if I have any more ink sacks. I think I should just oh I've got there's a squid here, there's a couple of squids here, so I'll be able to get some more. Uh I'm not sure if I just use the ink sacks or if I need to craft them into black hole. 
Uh, we'll see, I guess. It's good. They drop a couple. I think the first one dropped three, and then those two uh, did two each, so that's good. But now the challenge is going to be finding sheep. So I think I'm going to have to stop getting pets. So I've got Fenton, uh, Chanel, Popeyes the Tent, and now Mr. Bacon. I think I'm going to have to leave it there because if I do get any more pets, nothing's going to spawn because we're on the Xbox. Uh, there's a limited number of the like, things that can spawn, so I really am going to have to end it here. I didn't even mean to get anything after Chanel, then I just kind of chanced it with Popeyes X, Popeyes the Tent, and after him, um, a friend of mine sent me a video of like a shaved dog, that of a shaved cat that looked like a bacon strip, and so the idea of Mr. Bacon was born. But, but really, I, I cannot get a any more pets, because if I do, nothing will spawn in this world. I remember I saw a thing with like a bunch of sheep in them. Oh, here we go. Can I just, yeah, okay. Ah, oh, no, you gave me three. Thank you, Monsieur Sheep. Very can do you. You only give me one, you're a bad sheep. Here, freedom. Oh, you've already brought some back. I guess he, he felt repentant and he's only given me one again. But you know what? You've given me two now, so thank you. That was very good of him. It's just, I'm not going to wait for them to, to, to grow their wool because I've only got like five minutes left before I have to end this. So I'm going to go see if I can find any more sheep. If I can't in the next like minute, uh, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to get started. on Like I said, a very, very basic outline of it. And then the next video, we'll start the sheep farm. And once that's done, I'll be able to get some more wool. And then I will complete um, Mr. Bacon's house dog there i can't shoot i can't die you can i no right now i'm gonna take a quick um swing back by those two sheep we passed before uh, i'm gonna see if they run back any wood if they have i'll shear them if not i'll just go and i will get started on mr bacon's house and of course it's not gonna be great it's not even gonna be any floor or anything in it um it'll be a house and, and that's more than most people have in this economy so you know well, this guy's grown back his wool. This guy, he must have felt really bad about, you know, and he's given me three. What are you giving me? You've, you've given me three. He, he gave me, what have I got now? I've got, he's given me five. He, he was great, so he was. Thank you, Mr. Sheep. You know, I, I doubted you at the start, but you really pulled through in the end, so thank you. He can't hear me, but anyway. Look, he can't hear me anyway. He's a, he's a sheep. He's a line of code and a texture. I really need friends. Or actually... I couldn't do his house over here, could I? No, I'll just do it over there. I want to basically have it in line with some of the others, so... And that's all we can do with the black hole. That'll do for now. I'll make it look better later on. And there we go. That's, um... Oh, no. That's not right. No, there we go. That's very bright for some reason, but yeah. Um, that's, that's his house so far. Hey, Mr. Bacon. Come and see your brand new house. ta -da. What do you think? Oh, he loves it. Anyway. Yeah, that's all I got time for. Um, God bless. Bye.